3, 2, 1, all systems go. Welcome people and aliens to Star Talk. I'm your host Akresha, the Cruise Machine. This is the channel where we recap some of the best conversations about Star Citizen on Spectrum and Reddit. The Banu Merchantman, what we know officially based on interviews. I'm using two main interviews with John Crew. Big guns and armored, for a civilian ship. VIP quarters, org headquarters, shop slash stores, in it. Defender interplay, probably a parasite craft, hopefully multiple. 3500 plus SCU of cargo, not cut. Same size for landing pads but bigger, fatter? Bringing all the concepts together, making everything fit in it. So what I get from these two videos is that the BMM will get the Carrick treatment and will get nearly everything that was ever promised. Now, it will not have a lot of agility and is not a true warship but will have lots of features. I predict it will have a mini mall, but more of a display center with the goods staying in the cargo hold to be picked up after purchase. It will have luxury VIP accommodations which open up a new career slash game loop for BMM owners. It will have a place to have a drink. I'm so hoping to run my makeshift space cantina, even if it's just the size of the negotiation room. It has been called a possible home base for an org. It is good as a long distance ship which is pretty self-sufficient. It has possible C and C ability to coordinate its defenders. It will have alien defenses. From lore, it should have some type of prisoner transport capabilities as Banu are known slavers. It has a huge ramp as its lower fin slash landing pad it would make sense for it to have a land vehicle bay. Did I miss anything? When it is completed, I think the only people who will be truly disappointed with the BMM will be those people who think it will be in the capital warship, Ship League. Not, A, Warship. The best way to keep most BMM owners happy. 1. Base of 1500 SCU regardless of configuration. 2. Configurable belly, side section that can be one of. A. 1500 to 2000 more SCU of cargo space. B. Hidden turret compartment adds two to three more turrets on each side c internal shopping area required for some specific merchandise or sale types for example drugs slaves contraband etc also would be able to leave the ship in this configuration to generate passive income through the shop types faction ratings you have built for yourself remotely get alerts and issue certain commands if needed return to base next stop bunker down flee etc 3. Ability to have two defenders docked on the outside, possibly house another two if you have the SCU configuration from above and errant loaded with cargo, Banu fleet, carrier option when needed. 4. Good straight line speed as others have mentioned, not responsive, fast when maneuvering. 5. Efficient, easy to manage its systems and customize as needed, it's a home ship, do what you need at the time. This way, people can make it their own and focus or generalize as needed, you could configure as needed in hangar or through some process that means you cannot adjust on the fly. As an added bonus, you wouldn't be able to tell how a BMM is configured looking from the outside, this helps with the whole Q-ship, blockade runner role as well, would keep people guessing. I would be happy with this. It seems like most of these things are happening without shrinking main cargo. The weapon systems are the only thing really in question. I also think modularity would solve the problems of making everything fit in it. But with the size of the ship, probably two to three times the internal size of the Carrick, it really shouldn't be an issue. Knowing what we know so far I'll be happy whichever way it comes out. I'm not planning to use it in a lot of combat so I'm much more flexible with the people hoping to get a cheap cap warship.
Wait, it is missing the true Carrick treatment. Let's start the rabble right up starting now. To be a proper merchant org headquarters it will need the following. 1. A high-end medical facility. 2. Exploration equipment to properly compete with the Carrick. 3. The ability to mount ground assault. 4. A hangar bay. 5. A bomb or mine bay, gotta compete with other ships here. 6. Cafeteria, with bar. 7. A pleasure palace. Your ideas are more reasonable than these. My mentioned ones are the items people expect from all ships, minus the last two, those are for me exclusively. You forgot the raptor pits. Every true home base needs a raptor pit to throw undesirables to, when they act up. BMM owners know what I'm talking about. It can easily hold more than 3,500 SCU with a current length of 160, and the cargo area being 30% of that length. Even back when it was much smaller we had a crosscut that suggested 8 SCU tall and 12 SCU wide. Now it's more than that. 1 SCU got the length of 1.25 meters by the way. By the old smaller BMM's width and height, the above would still result in 160 times 0.3 divided by 1.25 times 8 times 12 equals 3,686.4 SCU. That's without a walk path inside. I've seen people who have measured the new 160 meters model say the cargo area can fit 10k SCU before taking into account open space inside it. I've been saying the same thing ever since the space mall debate started. It's simple geometry. The dimensions of the BMM would give it an internal volume of at least 2 carics, probably 3 or more, if it's actually getting fatter. There is no reason for the debate. Some people don't realize external growth means exponential internal growth. At 160 meters it should be able to fit all that cargo and every other internal bell and whistle that has been mentioned. The only reason for reducing the cargo would have been artificial nerf for balance. That's not what this game was supposed to be about. I'm glad they at least kept the 3500 plus SCU. I hope they use the rest of the space well and not just waste it. I'm fairly optimistic as shops, habitation, VIP quarters, negotiation rooms, etc. will take some space. There is still no reason not to have a ground vehicle bay a small medical station, etc. I'm not asking for an OP do everything ship but just pointing that there is no physical reason to exclude anything. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you enjoyed what you saw, please like and subscribe. If you'd like to see more, click on the links below. I'm planning to give away gifts when the channel meets certain milestones. At 100 subscribers I'll give away a $10 Star Citizen gift card.